right, uh, before I get started, I just want to say good job to everybody. You covered a lot of really cool and really interesting things, particularly what uh, Graydon was talking about, The Shining, great film, a great movie. Uh, so let's get into it. I'm going to talk about a serious topic, impaired driving. Now, uh, <clears throat> now, I know what some of you may be thinking when I say impaired driving. Oh, great. This guy's up here about to give his mad speech, and maybe I am. But this is something I believe is important, something that can affect each and every one of us in blink an eye, snap of a finger. Uh, now, I could talk up here for five minutes, droning on about things you've all probably heard before, and throwing numbers at you that you'll never remember. But instead, I've opted for a slightly more visual approach. <coughs> that. Allow me to introduce my brother. Great picture. Good looking guy. <laughs> now, my brother used to be uh, your average everyday guy. You know, just like you and me, you would work hard trying to get through life as successfully as you can. <clears throat> so I'm going to tell you a short story, I'll try to keep it short, about how my brother went from being your average everyday guy to being sued for $6.4 million. And you guys thought your tuition was bad. <laughs> so, one night, my brother has a party, you know, because that's what you do. He's been in college too. And, uh, having a few drinks late, at uh, some point during the night, there were two girls attending the party that needed to go home. They're living about 20 minutes out of town. This is happening in Cardston. So my brother, being the helpful person that he is, decides, I can help. You know, I can be that person to get you home, even though I've had way too much to drink. Didn't think about it. So they all hop into this nice, brand new, I think it's a 2015 Ram, that he just bought off the lot, and then lost his insurance because he was broke. <clears throat> and they're driving down the highway, doing about 160. It was like about 160. And he's going down the straight line, and there's a turn in the road. Uh, I don't know whether he was talking to the people in the back, or just distracted, or what happened, but he didn't make that turn. So. Doing about a buck sixty, flies off the corner of this road, hits the ditch. <clears throat> Friend struck in the back. Uh, Rolled it end over about three times. <clears throat> now somehow my brother was lucky enough to walk away from this, but the passengers did not fare so well. The two girls in the back were both rushed to the hospital. Uh, critical condition with severe head trauma, lacerations, and one of them had a broken collarbone. And then, more importantly, me. In the front seat was actually sitting my uncle. <clears throat> and my uncle is a lifelong sufferer of AS, which is a form of arthritis that actually fused his uh, vertebrae in the back of his neck and kept him from ever turning his head. So you can imagine what kind of impact that crash would have on a spine that is already more or less damaged, has no flex. He was hospitalized for about six months. He only recently got out. And he is now a complete uh, quadriplegic. So he lives his life in a chair, kind of like Stephen Hawking, more or less. He has permanent hair, and can't do anything by himself, obviously. <clears throat> so, why did I choose this? Because I believe it shows both victims and a victimizer, and both affects the point of view when one starts to drive. And it goes to show that in one moment, with one decision, you can forever change the life of someone else, like 
he did to my uncle or to the two girls and their families, uh, or his own, or your own even, because now he's being sued again for 6.4 million, and he lost his license, he lost his job, he, things are not going well for him. <coughs> so, you may be telling yourself, well Dustin, that's your brother, that's your family, why does this matter to me? Just because it happened to him, just because it happened to them, doesn't mean it can happen to me. I'm invincible. And that's where I would have to say that you are very wrong. And let's imagine for a moment that it were you. And could I get everybody to stand up? <coughs> so, statistics show, and I know I said I wasn't gonna throw a bunch of numbers at you guys, but bear with me. Statistics show that in the United States and Canada alone, 32 people die every day from an impaired driving accident, whether that be the driver or a victim of the accident. That means that somebody dies every 45 minutes. This class started at uh, 9.30, correct? We've already passed that 45 minute mark, which means Chris, sit down. Chris is a victim of an impaired driving accident no longer exists in this class, you'll never see him again. By the time we leave school in approximately five and a half hours, about six more people are gonna sit down. So we'll have Michael, Riley, Mitch, Jesus, Brandon, and I believe Chase. That's six, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, yeah. Six more people from your classroom that are no longer here. So this kind of shows the impact that it would have if it were more local, if it were more direct to you. For the ones that are standing, you think that, okay, well, they're all dead, I'm fine, I'm safe. But the numbers for people that are severely injured in an impaired driving accident are much higher. So the rest of you would also have to sit down. Now, some of you may not be you know, dead, but you may never speak again. You may never walk again. Uh, some of you may never breathe. So with that to conclude, I would just like to leave you with some words that my mother used to tell me as a child. Be smart, 